welcome to the second episode of Chasing the C Notes podcast. I'm your co-host Eric, and I'm always joined by my co-host Larry. What's up, Larry? What's up, Larry Love in the house. In the house, in the hizzy. Okay, Larry. So we have about a month worth of uh of like sample size now. And uh what what do you want to say about the team the team and the season so far? And uh, everything else that you think about what you've seen started off really strong. We had about you know a five game win streak. You know we got that snapped, and we had another five or six game win streak. So I'm pretty impressive that we've been more consistent uh, early on. Um, yeah, we had some losses that we shouldn't have had, um, but I think I will forgive those. Um, I, I know we don't like playing Philly and Orlando. Um, and we saw the results of that. Um, but I, I overall, I'm going to say we're doing pretty well. And we have this tournament coming up. So let's see what happens. Right, right, right. I feel you. I feel you. And uh, we'll talk about it when we do our November recap. We also going to do our Tommy points. We're going to do our GM roundtable, our trade block. And then we'll have our power rankings with uh, what we predict is going to be the month of December. So, without further ado, let's get into NBA news. And Larry, I don't know if you saw this, but I put it in the NBA news. Uh, Popovich took the mic and talked to the crowd. And so, so let me let me just set the setting. So it was uh, they were playing the LA Clippers, and uh, Kawhi Leonard was at the free throw. And for some reason, he was being booed by San Antonio fans. I mean, like viciously booed. I mean, I'm talking about like the whole, the whole arena was booing him. And Papa Beige grabbed the mic. I'm talking about the PA mic and told the crowd, no more boos. We're not like that. That's not us. Uh, let's move on. No more boos. And then he dropped the mic and sat back down. And I have put that in the news because I don't think I've ever seen that at a game. I've ever seen that as a highlight. I just haven't seen it, period. So in your opinion, what was Popovich trying to do? Like, I don't know. It was it had a lot of granddaddy energy, basically what I'm saying. I don't blame him. Um, he's already got Wimby. Imagine if he was able to get Kawhi back. I would have done the same as I think. I mean, nowadays, superstars move to different teams like like it's nothing, you know. Um, I don't think it worked. Uh, the fans just started booing again afterwards, so it didn't really make a difference. But, you know, you know, he, I mean, he's right. It doesn't do stuff, but, you know, fans now, they don't care. You know, if they if they get salty, they get certain players who get yelled at and screamed at, you know, uh, I feel like four or five different arenas so it's just the way it is uh, the other the other set of news that i put on here is uh malone gets the extension so he's the denver coach he won the championship last year and they're just now giving him the extension so what was what was denver waiting for why not give him the extension right away um that one was that one was bizarre um but It, it, it must have something to do with with the, what Denver was looking at as far as money money was concerned. Um, as we saw, we saw JB got paid right away. We saw Pritchett got paid right away. Um, you know, they they make these mistakes. They try to cover it up. But, you know, Malone did a really good job last year. So we should have just rewarded him a long time ago. Yeah, but, a long time ago. And, I mean... You have the Jokic is the best player in the NBA. So as long as you have him, you're going to win a lot of championship, basically. And Murray's not back yet. And we'll talk about it on when we do the power rankings. And when he comes back from injury, that team is going to be unstoppable. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that's why I, I didn't put Denver as low as you did, because I feel like they just need some more time to tell. Um, but I think uh, I think we'll we'll talk about that a little bit later. Uh, Larry, the other set of news is I put the Josh Giddy, <laughs> the Josh Giddy. Uh, it hasn't been confirmed. It's still an investigation, but 
what are your thoughts? Why why is this happening? Like all of a sudden, all these players, whether it's baseball or NBA, why are they being caught with underage, you know, minors basically? They basically either dating or talk to or you know did inappropriate things why is this happening so much well um I, everyone's on notice you know um i think you know p diddy just got put on notice now josh giddy so you know i'm not even gonna do the giddy anymore you know just because of that so that i just think that uh you know we you know he's a good player too I like his game um but we know this has been going on for years uh and every every arena not just sports music every it's been going on everywhere um so i'm glad they're starting to crack down on it um but you know um guys stop doing it so i gotta say yeah i agree larry let's get into our tommy points so this past month who are you giving your tommy point to i'm giving my points to, to peyton pritchard um i feel like yes his three point percentage is off but he's been continuing to do what he always used to do which was hustle hustle getting those loose balls doing everything that we know as tommy points um it was close call There's a few other guys who were a potential i think you named one um and the other one is 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 white i think he was also pretty close he was part number two um breaking new got the we got the college rankings out oh the college rankings Listen, I don't want to get in my uh, my soapbox about college uh, sports, period. But let's just say that I rarely, rarely follow college sports. I think that's the biggest scam uh, going on right now, especially what the uh, athletic directors make, what the coaches make. And um, I know that the NIL is out there, but it's only it's only out there for particular group of players, not all. So I, I, I don't I don't follow sports. Um, it's college sports, what I say. Uh, Larry, I give him my Tommy points to uh, Drew Holiday. Uh, I think that having him. Well, actually, let me just say this. I decided it was between White and Holiday, and then. When I saw Holiday guarding Embiid, and, and not, not not like getting like double team guarding him, I'm talking about like one on one, like hey, I'm gonna guard you. You're not gonna you're not gonna score on me that easy. And I was like, okay, that is Tommy Point material. That is, I'm gonna man you up. I know that you're like eight inches taller than me, but I'm still gonna man you up. And I, I just about like. I don't you weren't <laughs> you weren't at my house but I, I I was like ready to clap stand up and just <laughs> give us a look because I was just very content I was like wow this guy I don't know maybe like before the game or during the huddle he was like listen I got him beat don't worry about him beat I got him and I was just like that deserves a time point that's why I went with Drew Holiday do you think the Celtics lose anything when you lose a Marcus Smart and you bring in a Drew Holiday defensive. Uh, I like Marcus Smart because he, you know, he had that hustle DNA, loose balls, steals. But then you're also getting that with Drew Holiday. Plus, plus uh, you're getting better shooting, better passing. But you're getting defense. And I feel like they, they made I know he's older than uh, Marcus Smart but they made it was an improvement in that role and from what I'm hearing about Marcus Smart is he didn't he didn't really get along with Joe Ma so what's so why even keep him around if he's gonna if he's gonna be uh, uh, basically a sour uh, a short thumb to Joe Ma wow. what's, what's your opinion um, I, I mean, I have to agree with you on that. I just think, uh, yeah, it's just not, mm, just not, not the same to me. So yeah, I have to agree with you on that one. Uh, the next, the next uh, segment is the GM roundtable. I know that you didn't have anybody for this month, but 
I actually put Sam Presti because, and we'll get when we get to the power rankings, I am actually very, very um, shocked to see OKC doing this well. I know, I know they have a young team. I know they have this guy from Canada. I, who, who knew? First it was Drake and now is uh it's now now they have basketball players I can play. So what what do you think of OKC? Um OKC is is amazing. They they're getting better each year, you know. Uh, I think we can go say the same thing about Orlando. Um but I I you know, I, I feel the Celtics have gotten better this year as well. Um so there's going to be some teams that are going to go backwards and that's why when you're looking at the rankings, it just doesn't make sense. But um, I think OKC is is on another level here. So uh, we'll see how far they go. Yeah, I really like them. I really like them a lot. Um, we we didn't have anybody for the trade block because we both thought that it was too early in the season. Uh, so join us for episode three. We might have somebody on there that maybe they can get some... Uh, some uh, some benefit out of the trade block or nothing yet okay larry so let's let's do a power rankings larry who do you have as your top 10 teams right now got boston okc denver orlando minnesota that's my top five top six is philly sacramento milwaukee phoenix and then dallas is is 10 and out of the, out of that power ranking, who who other than Boston, obviously, who do you like that you are impressed by it? I'm going to say Orlando and OK. Uh, they've been consistent enough to get my attention, um, and they're starting to win some some good. Games. Um, I know OK had a little bit of a collapse where Dallas went on a 30-0 run. Um, they were able to recover, time, but. Yeah, who I have as my power rankings is I have Boston, I have Minnesota, I have Orlando, OKC, and I have Denver. They round out my top five. And then from six to ten, I have Philadelphia, Dallas, Milwaukee, Sacramento, and Phoenix. I, you know, just like you, I'm really impressed with what Orlando and OKC have done. They're, they're bowling hard especially Orlando. Um, but then I Minnesota, I mean, they made a huge leap. I And I seen some people say that maybe this is an early leap that they wasn't expecting to work. But what I'm seeing so far is it is they're crushing it, what I'm saying. Yeah. Yeah, I agree with you. Yeah, this is this is uh, Oak, uh, Minnesota. I think they're on another level. I honestly, I didn't think that the bigs would work in Minnesota with uh, with Towns and uh, Gobert, but it is working. It is working one hundred and ten percent working. Yeah, and I also have to say that uh, you know Minnesota's talent has gotten better. Um, and we, we knew we knew that their their number one star was going to get to that point. I feel like, you know, he really hurt us in overtime when we played him. Other than that, we would have had a victory with that one. Um, but yeah, they, their defense is number one. It's top notch. And when they when they score really well, it's hard to beat them. And when and let's um, let's talk about the month of November because we you you predicted. The Celtics would go eleven and four, and that's exactly what the record show. It's eleven and four. I predicted them to go twelve and three. We both we both had them winning against Minnesota, and for some reason, like you mentioned, in overtime, I have a I have a lot of problems with that game because in overtime it looked like Jalen Brown was doing the whole like oh just give me the ball and clear out but i don't this is not jalen brown's team it's tatum's team so why why do you think after that game and i haven't seen it since so maybe they tried it they went to him on that game it's they saw that it didn't work so they went back to tatum 
that was my only early, early, early in the month concern was that maybe he was, maybe the contract got to his head and he was trying to like be the man. I don't know. W- w- what are your thoughts on that? I feel like they just need to come up with some better plays with Brown. It shouldn't be like you said, a clear out type. It should actually be, hey, this is an actual play that we're going to run for Brown. We know what he can do inside the paint. We know every now and then he can step back and hit a three. Um, but I definitely want to see them um, play him more as an as an A1 and not an AB. Um, because I feel like that's the only way they're going to move forward. When Tatum went down with his ankle injury, Brown just, just shut down. And it shouldn't have been that way. He should have been able to carry us to a win against Miami. And um, I think they really got to learn how to play because we know... Taylor's going to miss some games. Brown's going to miss some games. Porzingis is already starting to miss games. So we have to make sure that we have all three of these guys willing to be that number one guy when when things, when it needs, when you need it, you know? Yeah, I 100% agree. And, and this, uh, this is a trend with uh, this team because I was looking at the losses and they shot against Minnesota. They shot 39% so well. Well below, and they went eleven for thirty nine from three from threes. When I look at the other, the other, the other loss that we didn't predict was the Charlotte Hornets loss, and I don't know, I don't know what happened in that game because Tatum had forty five points and they still lost. What do you think? What do you think happened during that game that they just couldn't they couldn't close it out? If I remember that game correctly, that was uh, that was a free throw uh, issue. Um, we had we missed a lot of free throw. I think uh, Drew Holiday missed two free throws, and then Przingis was missing free throws in that game. Um, it was just it was just a lot a lot going on, and we were somehow still in the game, which was very strange. And I think that was only because of Tatum's uh, you know forty five points. But then all of a sudden. Um, their 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 star score their star in the game as well, so I just think it's it it was defense and you know and you know we had Charlotte's number for so long they were getting tired of being the little brother and they wanted to show us something. No, you you're one hundred percent right because when I look at the stats from that game, uh, Boston shot sixty four percent from the free throws. They went eighteen for twenty eight. So they, you're right. They were not making the free throws. They shot 43 percent, which is good. They were, I mean, f- good for them. I, they, I, I just feel like, listen, if you don't play defense um, against e- good teams, bad teams, it doesn't matter. There, this is the NBA. They're gonna score points. People are gonna take it down your throat. I, I just feel like they need to play better defense. And you know, I thought that. When they got Drew Holiday, he was bringing some of that defensive mind, but it seems like they're not, they haven't grasped it, or I don't know what's going on. Why do you think, Larry, that the defense is not happening? The defense has been inconsistent, and I don't, I don't fault that. I think sometimes we forget that Drew Holiday and Przingis are the players, and they're in the starting five. Um, so I think it, it's just, it's just, it's just chemistry and flow. And every now and then you'll see we have to rely back on Tatum and Brown and, and White because they've been around longer. Um, but I think once they, I think once we get closer to the midseason, we're going to start seeing um, a little bit of flow. I, I was taken back by how well Porzingis was guarding the rim. Um, and then Drew Holiday, uh, he takes these really big guys. I was taken back how well he was doing with them. So we definitely have some weapons on defense. Um we just have to get everyone's buy-in um, and then go from there. I, I think we need to get back to being a defensive game, defensive-minded team. No, I agree. I think that they need to they need to go. I know that they score a lot of points. Obviously, this team scores a lot of points, but I want to see them limit limit the other team. And that brings us, you know, that brings us up to like the next in-season tournament against Indiana. We we both have been winning that game, but I feel like if they don't if they don't play defense, 
against Indiana. This could be a, a loss. What What do you think? Yeah, um, it was only November 1st when we dropped 150 of them, and they only scored 104. Mm-hmm. Uh, Halliburton had a front row seat, I think, in that game. So he's seen that, and I think uh, it's going to be a tough a tough first game. We, we can beat Indiana, but I just think that's going to be an issue. Uh, I think my, my concern is when we look at November, how many times did, did the Celtics allow someone to score 100 points? And it seems like it was almost every game, but maybe five, you know, and we, we got. Yeah, this is this is I mean, them giving 100, giving the century point, the century mark point to every team, uh, even the Knicks, even the Heat. I mean, there's a lot of teams that reach that that century mark. Right. And I, yeah. I didn't you know, I felt like this like. Obviously, this whole thing works. Not having Marcus Smart, not having uh, you know all the all the other players works, and bringing in Drew Holiday, bringing in Pasingas, it worked. But I feel like they still that defense is still shaping, right? I mean, you're gonna get good defense from Drew Holiday and, and Derek White, but I want I want to see more from Jalen Brown. Like this most you know this recent game that happened. Uh, against Philadelphia, they started. They started out well with Jalen Brown getting a couple of steals, but I want to see more of that. And I want to, you know, the fact that Philadelphia scored 119 points with basically the B team out there, I, I, it kind of worries me a little bit. Yeah, and like I told you, uh, I seen that when they played Memphis. I seen that when they played Charlotte. I mean, when they played Memphis, Memphis was missing like four, like four key players. It was very, really, really hard to win that game, and we snuck out with a win. But it gave other teams a blueprint of how to beat us. And you saw what happened the next game when we played Charlotte. So we got it. We got to get better and we got to figure things out. And, um, you know, I just think that, uh, you know, I still can't and that we only have four losses, but they're doing really well. Yeah, they're doing really well. And for the month of December, you have them going 10 and 3. I have them going 8 and 5. There's just a couple of tough games in there that I don't think they're going to pull it off. Not not playing this way anyway. So, Larry, who who are your must-watch games for the month of December? Uh, obviously, Indiana, which is the tournament game that I think is the next, the next game that we're going to play. Um, and then, of course, Orlando, because uh, we still haven't really figured that out. Uh you know, even though I had them win in the first match against Orlando, they ended up losing that one. And now we have, I think we have a back-to-back against Orlando. Yeah, they have a back-to-back against Orlando for December 15th and the 17th. I have them splitting that game, one to Orlando, one to uh, the Celtics. But it's like you said, when I, when I watched, and actually I didn't work that night, but I saw the highlights and... Against Orlando, Orlando was really physical with them, um, and I was like, you know, I was sometimes, sometimes I was uh, wishing that Ime Udoka was on the team and coaching them because he would call the time and be like, "Hey guys, you guys are being out physical right now, and that shouldn't happen. <laughs> What's the whole point of putting 10, 15 pounds of muscle for Jalen Brown and uh, for?" Jason Tatum, if you're not going to use that extra muscle against teams, what's the point, Larry? Yeah, no, I, I agree. And um, like I said, you can't let that be seen. Once a team sees that, other teams are going to use that. You know, there's assistant coaches that are watching those games and they're using that for the next the next game, uh, especially if you're if they're playing the next, the next day. And so we saw, you know, Charlotte did that, looked at that, and um, you know, it looks like we almost got like a little baseball schedule because we got to play Cleveland back to back, and then we got to play Orlando back to back. And those are going to be those are going to be tough games to to go four and zero when a team has already seen you. You almost it's almost like they're preparing for it like a mini playoff. Um, so that get tough, uh, tough, and that's right after the Indiana game. So that's going to be a real tough five games, and I want to say do. Yeah, and the other the other loss that I have them um, is against uh, 
the Clippers and actually Sacramento. Uh, I'm not down on the Clippers. I actually think that the Clippers will figure it out. I watched a couple of games, uh, the couple of Clippers games, and I think I know that they got Harden. I know that they got Kawhi Leonard and you know Paul Paul George on the team and Westbrook on the team, but I think that you know. I think they know their plays. I think that they'll figure it out. What do you think? I I think the Clippers are going to be like last year Phoenix. I mean, we know that they have one of the best teams on paper, but they're just not going to get there in time. They will get to the playoffs. They will advance pretty far, but you know they will end up sputtering out when they play a team. I think was it Denver that took out Phoenix? What what? Uh, there will be a team that's been around and been playing together more long. It's like. It's like the uh, the the Olympics, you know. We we get these great players on the team, but they don't know how to play with each other. And then you have them play against a team that's been playing for 20, 35 years, and you think that that's going to help? No, they they know where everybody's going to be. It's, it's this chemistry. Yeah, I, I agree. I think it, it, they're they're going to figure it out. Like come January, February, they're going to figure it out. And you know, before we know it, I think that I mean we. We just did the power rankings, but I think that they're going to be in the top 10 by next next time that we do this. I really feel like this experiment, and I want to say experiment because I, I've, I don't think I've ever seen four superstar players, or at least, you know, in their prime or past the prime, actually in one team. I, I've seen two, three, but not four. We've been doing the three superstars for a while. Um, the Boston started it off, and then of course Miami copied us right after that. And now they're going to four and five. Where you know, if you look at Boston and if you look at Clippers, uh, it's pretty much like four or five superstars. So um, if it ends up being Phoenix and and the Clippers and Boston, and then uh, I'm trying to think of what other team in the East has four superstars. Um, it's just it's just the new the new trend. You know, so I think that's who's going to be the, in the final four. Yeah, I, I think that's that is the new trend. I think that as the NBA, as the talent gets wider, I mean, like there's more people, you know, more people coming from colleges, more people coming internationally. I, I, I really feel good about where the NBA is going with the talent wise. And I think that these teams are going to, you know, before you know it, it's going to be like the Clippers where you have four superstars in one team. Yeah. Yeah, I think so. I think so, too. There's definitely going to be some changes. Yeah, big changes coming up. All right, Larry. So what do you have to say to the Boston fans out there before we officially end episode two? Boston, I know you're a little bit down um, because you just have Mac Jones, but the Celtics are going to make you feel better. They're going to do amazing this month. Um, I think I got ten three. You got uh, you got eight five. Um, maybe they come in between that and and give us what like a like a nine nine four eleven four something like that a uh, nine four. So I think that's what's going to happen. So. Um, you know, we're in good shape and we're going to have a good Christmas game against the Lakers. Um, so we're going to be all right. And what's, what's uh, Larry, what's your prediction for the end season tournament? Do you think the Celtics win it all? If we get past Indiana, I think we're in good shape. Um, I, I, I just think that we need to shut those boys down. And then I think we probably end up playing Milwaukee, if I'm correct. Um, and for some reason, Milwaukee hasn't figured us out yet. Hopefully that stays the same. And then we'll end up playing against, um, I'm going to say, I'm going to say Phoenix. You think I'm so? Say- you think it's yeah. going to be Boston and Phoenix in the finals? Yes. Yeah. And I could repeat uh, in, a few, in a few months. Yeah, I actually, I think that they, if they beat Indiana and they go to the semis with, uh, they, I think the semis are going to be in Las Vegas. Anything can happen. I, you know, I I don't like to say that this doesn't count, but it actually counts. It's actually good bragging rights. I think that I want to see Boston, you know, be the first team to hold that trophy up. I know that, you know, the payment, (laughs) the compensation is so-so, but 
I want to see I want to see them hold a hold the trophy up and especially because this is the first trophy I want to see them hold that up yeah yeah that'd be, it'd be interesting um, to see that happen so uh, we'll see we'll see what they do we're gonna end episode number two with uh, chasing C notes podcast uh, join us next month when we do December and hopefully by then we'll have one of the trophy ready for the uh, end season tournament uh, Larry I don't I don't know maybe we'll have some more NBA news we'll have we'll have somebody who we don't like that's ready to be traded hopefully um, and then that's that's pretty much it do you have anything else Larry no, I'm just ready. Let's let's go ahead and get get these games on, get this tournament on, and get to the real deal. All right, I'm I'm with you. And with that said, I say peace. No. Hey guys, thanks again for watching. Uh, don't forget to like and subscribe. If you, any questions or comments, feel free to hit us up on uh, Shut Your Mouth Podcast at gmail.com. That's Shut Y M Podcast at gmail.com you can also hit us on twitter or on instagram at sym podcast thanks again